Hey YouTubers, Stephen here. How's everybody doing? Well, cheers everybody. It's uh, Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada. Uh, it's my pumpkin ale. I know a lot of people don't like pumpkin males, but uh, this is a great recipe. Um, and the spicy note from the pearl hops I grew this year, really nice with the clove. So, uh, I promised a while ago that I was going to do a new do an air recipe. Um, I've tweaked my original one. Uh, there are some little differences, and I'll have the recipe down below. So, uh, cheers, everybody. 17. Mmm. So good. Really creamy head on it. Okay, so, um, like I said, I, I did some tweaking. The original recipe, I used breadcrumbs. Um, basically, just as a, a combiner. This recipe, I'm not using the breadcrumbs, um, and I find it actually comes out a little better. I have changed some of the ingredients. I changed the salt, I changed the pepper, um, I changed the oregano, the cayenne, and the chicken soup base mix. So, uh, I pretty much changed everything. Tweaked it a little up, a little down, uh, just to make it a little easier. So, And this is also going to be a 2 kilogram batch of hamburger. I think two kilograms or so too close to four and a half pounds. So, uh, sorry, it's going to be a metric for my American friends. Um, it just creates less confusion when I'm trying to convert back and forth. Um, so, let me get some gloves. I already have all the spices all mixed up here in, in the Tupperware. And um, I'm going to throw on some latex gloves just because, well, mixing up hamburger you know, by hand is kind of gross with all the fat, right? So, uh, nip before we do. Alright, let's move the camera. So there we go, we get some medium ground beef from a local grocery store. Now I know some people, you know, probably want the really lean. Uh, I'd actually prefer using regular ground if I could find it because you really need that fat in the in the donair meat. So we're gonna pull off a good chunk and I'm just gonna try and layer the bottom here to make it easier to uh, spread out the, the spices. Um, it takes less mixing you know when you get it uh, mixed thoroughly. So here's the spices all mixed up. So we're just going to um, gently sprinkle the spices over the meat. Try and put about half of it. All right, and another package. Didn't quite spread that one around like I did the other, but it's all right. All right, so now that it's pretty much all spread, get our hands in here. And I find if I take a take my hands and do a, a squeezing, twisting motion, it seems to mix it up really good. And you can turn the bowl as well. All right. So when the meat looks pretty consistent, you know, some spices, some hamburger. I mean, there's not a whole lot of spice for you to really see, but I should really look at trying to get some new lighting, eh? All right. Anywho, once it's all ready, we're gonna get uh, moving to the next step. All right, folks. So. I'm just going to go over this um, briefly. It's pretty much the same as my first video. I'm also going to do it in two different ways. So this method we're going to use a rolling pin. Uh, if you haven't seen my first one, we're going to use this with some tin foil to um, roll out the meat really, really thin. But what we're going to do is start off with um, a glump of hamburger. Probably about twice the size of what you'd use 
for a really thick hamburger on the barbecue, all right? And what we're going to do is we're just going to try and roll it around in a ball. Get it all together so that it's nice and solid. Get some air out of it. You could even slap it down on the counter. It's what we used to do in the olden days when we were making doner meat, mind you. We'd roll it on the counter back and forth and we'd slam it down to get the air out of it. So uh, just using the hands is fine. All right, so now that we've got that, we've got the first piece of tin foil here. I'm just gonna put our meat in the center. Just kind of squish it down a little bit just so that it's flat and it'll be easier to start with the rolling pin. And whether you use the shiny side or the faded side, it doesn't matter. We're not using this for cooking. We're going to lay this on top, try and get it the top layer and, and the bottom layer as straight as you can. That way as we're rolling, you'll know where your borders are for top and bottom. So we'll squish this a little more. And with the rolling pin, we're just going to start rolling it out. And our goal to roll it out so that it can fit into a cookie sheet, all right, that we've got with tin foil. The idea is to get consistent thickness throughout the meat. And what we're looking for is, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch. A quarter of an inch is definitely a bit too thick. And we're going to get some that's going to squirt out the sides. thinner it is, the more tender the strips of doner meat will be when, uh, when you go to eat it. So what we're going to do is we're going to carefully try and just pull up the meat, or the tin foil off of the meat, and it just stay on the bottom layer. You may have to just flick a little. Some meat will start to tear up where it's thin. You can just use your finger and just rub it down the tin foil and it'll come off. Let's see if I get another piece up here. Here we go. Just a little flick and it'll come right down. Don't want to waste any valuable meat. All right, so I'll move this out of the way. And we happen to have a little extra, so I'll just throw that back in the pan. Alright, so I'm going to bring my pan over here. And what we want to do... This one here is a little thick, I'm just going to pull that off. Right, it may be hard to see how thin this is, but you get the idea. It's it's pretty thin. So we're gonna take it by the corners. Hopefully you can. We got this in camera. I think it is here. We're gonna just pick it up, keep it flat, line up the bottom here, and just lay it on this cookie sheet. Straight as we can, and then again, 
we're going to take the tin foil okay so what we're going to do is we're any of the little bit of meat that's hanging over the edge okay we're just going to leave on because what we're going to do different we're going to leave the tin foil on and when this starts to cook the tin foil will come right off of the uh, off of the meat and then that way you don't risk tearing it and this end here looks all right so what we're going to do is we're going to get the oven on and we'll get this in and then i'll show you the other method that darlene prefers to do okay so the way dar likes to do it we're going to do the same thing okay we're going to get good piece of meat here. Again, about twice the size of you would make for, you know, a really big burger. Alright, and I should. Alright, we're going to mix it all together. going to take our tin foil and Dar just likes to mash it out. I had a few other subscribers also say the same that they uh, prefer using their hands to mash it out. Just use your heel. Just keep working it. And this method does work. I'm just a little impatient. I find that the the uh, rolling pin works much faster, but you know what? If you don't have a rolling pin, it's just as good. This gives you actually a little more visual on how thick your meat is too. So you know, if you don't really want it that thin, you can make it a little thicker. Okay, all I'm doing now is I'm just taking this bottom part of my ham, right, and I'm just squishing it down and pushing it over to the to the side I'm not sure if it'll pick it up in the camera but there's a little ridge here where I went along with my wrist okay I'm getting the meat thinner and thinner as I go so here's my hand here's the ridge I'm just working it down the thinner you can get it the better it is really in my opinion Shout out to all the blue nosers that are away from home. And I uh, really appreciate all the great comments that I had on my original Donaire video. And uh, if you've never seen it, my original, uh, I'll put a link to it so you can see what the first recipe was. Maybe try both. Let me know which one you prefer best. Alright, the oven's ready. So I'm going to get the first one in, and uh, this one here, you know what, this is pretty consistent and pretty thin, so it's going to be good. Alright, so uh, for cooking, before I go, the oven's at 350, as thin as this meat is, um, you're really only talking maybe 5-6 minutes tops. Um, that way, you know, uh, you don't make it too dry. And um, again, where it's so thin, it really takes no time at all to, uh, to cook. Make sure you have um, a pot, you know, on your counter next to your stove. Because when you take the pan out, there's going to be a lot of grease in this. And this way you can just tip the corner, empty all the grease out into, uh, you know, your pot. Or whatever you have to collect it so that it... Um, uh, doesn't accumulate in the pan and then this way you can uh, put this down and then cut your strips in it so we'll be back here in a minute all right so watch your fingers tin foil is a little hot but 
it should just slide right off. And if you're quick enough, you're not going to drop anything down there. So, all right, we get the meat cooked, and uh, we'll come back. All right, hopefully this is going to work out okay. So I got my mug that I'm going to pour my drippings into. And the meat is actually it's cooked, right? There's no doubt about it. It, it it's cooked, but you don't need to make it really brown because we're actually going to throw this in the frying pan um, when our pita bread and everything is ready because we want the donair meat hot too, right? So I'm just going to tip the fat in there and hold the meat so it doesn't fall. And once you notice that the meat's, you know, semi-cooked, if you have tongs, it's a good idea to um, flip it over. Alright, perfect. Now to get our other one on the pan and in the oven. Alright, so we're back. I'm just cutting up some of the donair meat. So what we're doing is uh, we're taking our piece of donair meat here, taking a pizza cutter, and we're looking for maybe about three quarters of an inch strips or maybe an inch. I mean, you can make them as uh, wide as you like or as thin as you like. This meat's cooled down by the way. Um, all the kids are home from work from when they were out doing whatever they were doing. So we're going to get all the meat cut up and like I said we're going to fry this in the frying pan uh, when the pita bread is ready so that everything is hot. What I'll do is at the end of the video um, and show you what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling the strips apart and uh, putting them in the bowl. But at the end of the video I'm just going to put a link uh, to the spot on my original video on how to dress the donair meat. Alright so Everything is done. We're all cooked. I mean, look at this deliciousness. All right. Now, I've got uh, the cheese and lettuce. And, uh, yeah, I know. Some uh, donair connoisseurs would probably say, ooh, lettuce. But you can pretty much put whatever you want on it. So, uh, in closing, hope you uh, enjoy the recipe. And... I didn't want to offend anyone if anyone took offense, you know, to uh, the debate, you know, between Donairs and the Donner. Uh, the Donair is from, originally, the Turkish Donner. Uh, it was a Greek family that, that came to Halifax and, um, you know, created the, the first Donair here. And that was back in the 60s. Uh, the difference between those and uh, Gyros... Sorry if I mispronounced it, everyone, but um, the difference is usually um, gyros and, and donners have a sour sauce like uh, tzatziki. Uh, but donairs have a very sweet sauce, and the spices are a little unique, you know, to the area. So as a regional dish, not, uh, you know, really in comparison to uh, a gyros or uh, donners. So, uh, anywho... Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, I hope you really enjoy the recipe. I have yet to have a piece, but everyone's sitting down enjoying it. I mean, ah, wow, and the smell is so good, so, yeah, bon appetit. Mmm. It's really good. This is how I prefer, instead of rolling it up, you know, eating like, like an ice cream cone, I prefer it on a plate with lots of donair sauce. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for uh, subscribing. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. And, uh, you know, somewhere's up around here, I'm going to have a link, excuse me, showing you uh, in the original video frying the, um, the pita bread and putting the sauce, onions, tomatoes, uh, etc. So, Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around, and uh, we'll see you next time.